Section 137 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek Unintensive Course is about hostis, hatis, haughty, which is both the indefinite relative pronoun and the indirect interrogative pronoun or adjective. Hansen and Quinn covers this on page 524. First, we need to know how to decline hostis, hatis, haughty. And we'll have room for the singular here. And it is actually a combination of two words that you already know. The relative pronoun and the indefinite pronoun, tis. So you simply put both of those things together and decline each of them separately. So we have a medial sigma here instead of a final sigma for hos, but it's still hos, the masculine nominative singular relative pronoun, and tis, the masculine nominative singular indefinite pronoun. And the same thing happens in the feminine. We have he and tis again. And then in the neuter, ha and t. So we get hostis, hatis, haughty for the nominative singular of these forms. We continue that logic in the other cases. So Hutinos, although there is an alternate form hatu, hastinos, and hutinos hatu again. The dative is hotini with the alternate hato, hatini, and hotini hato again in the neuter. The accusative is hontina, haintina, hati. Notice that the accent here is really following the rules for enclitics, as if the tinos, the tis, tinos, tini, and tina were separate words that acted as enclitics. And that's why you can see a circumflex that looks like it's way back too far over this word in the genitive and the dative. This word means, as an indefinite relative pronoun, whoever or whatever, not sure what it is, something, whatever it is, I'm talking about it. And then we're going to use it in indirect question as the indirect interrogative where it will mean who or what. The neuter singular in the nominative and accusative looks just like the conjunction that you've been using in some indirect statement. So now you need to remember that both things are possibilities. Now let's decline this word in the plural. Hoitenes Haitenes, hatena, or the alternate form hata, hontenon, or the alternate form haton, hontenon, hontenon, haton in the neuter, hoistisi, which can have a new movable, or hotois in the dative plural for the masculine, heistisi with a new movable for feminine, and then hoistisi, hotois in the neuter plural. For accusative plural, hustinas, hastinas, hatina or hata again. And notice once more that you have these circumflexes where you might not expect them because the accent here is the result of putting these two words, one of which is enclitic, together. Now let's see how we can use this as an indefinite relative pronoun. Hostis kaka poye, kaka pesetai. Whoever does evil things will suffer evil things. I don't know who it is, but I'm saying whoever does this will suffer these things. You can see this also with on and the subjunctive, which gives two ways for that hostis to be indefinite. It increases the indefiniteness of this statement. Whoever does evil things will suffer evil things is the translation for both of these sentences. Hetis on kake e kaka poye. Whoever is evil does evil things. And you see again that on and the subjunctive which gives a generalizing force to the whoever clause along with a present Indicative, so we have sort of a present general construction here, and both the hatis, the indefinite relative pronoun, 
and the subjunctive add to this generalizing force that has us translate whoever is evil does evil things. But you don't have to have this pronoun or adjective in the nominative, hatina bulatai prate, she does whatever she wants. So there, hatina is the neuter plural, and you can see that it works very well to make a generalizing or indefinite statement there. Now, hostis, hatis, hati is also the indirect interrogative pronoun or adjective, and it means who or what there. And we're really not going to learn how to use it until we get to section 140, which is indirect question. But let me give you a quick example here. We can say the direct question, who are you, with the direct interrogative tis, tis a. But if we want to report that question, she asks who you are, we have to use the indirect interrogative. You can see how English keeps the same um, pronoun, but moves things around, moves the word order around to help us hear the indirect question. Greek is going to use a different pronoun instead. Erota hostis a. She asks who you are. There will be many more examples when we get to section 140. But for now, you've dealt with section 137, and you can try your hand at declining hostis hatis hati and using it as an indefinite relative.